Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you another video. Hey, man, Ravens, man, to mini camp day two. The Ravens on the field, I want to talk about them. All right, but before we get into that, like, comment, subscribe. Y'all been killing, let's keep running it up. Like the video, share the videos, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, man. All right, man, so like I said, the Ravens on the field, I want to talk about it. All right, so day two, um, the overall theme is offense played good. In the first kind of segment, the struggle in the second half uh, of, the, of the practice. Um, and also, Dalen Hayes. Impressive, once again. Uh, so, But before we get to that, let's start with the offense, right? So, uh, Lamar Jackson threw the ball pretty well today. Uh, they said 19-23 on 11-on-11 11 11 drills. Now, they said they gave him some extra time because, obviously, you can't sack the quarterback. So, maybe some of these completions he got, he wouldn't have got if you were able to actually touch the QB. But we're going to say 19 for 23, so good pass today for Lamar Jackson. And um, once again, who are the receivers, right? Mark Andrews, man, it's, it's a broken record. Mark Andrews is getting open. He's scoring touchdowns. He's making plays. Um, it's practice, but for a guy like Mark Andrews, that's something that we know that we can depend on. He's going to get open. He's going to score touchdowns. That's just what he does. All right. Uh, deep threat Rashad Bateman. Now, that's something that we want to hear because as Ravens fans, Myself included, I, we were wondering who's going to be the guy that takes over that Hollywood role and that can stretch the field. Now, obviously, Bateman and Hollywood are two completely different styles of receiver. But Bateman caught a 65 yard touchdown today, and Bateman has enough route running, has enough speed to get down the field. Now, if he can elevate his game and be able to really do it all short, intermediate, and deep ball, this is a true special talent in the one wide receiver. Now, I would still like to see somebody else with this capability stretch the field, whether it's DuVernay, whether it's um, somebody that they bring in. You know, I think we still need another guy who can stretch the field, but it's good to hear that Bateman can do that himself. All right. Uh, UDFA, Devin Williams made some plays. I haven't heard a lot of Devin Williams' name. And when, we, when the Ravens signed him right after the draft, it, I was kind of a guy that was getting some buzz. But it's been pretty much all Shamar Bridges, uh, Slade Bowden up until now. So it was good to hear uh, Devin Williams' name. Hopefully he can keep making plays because there are four wide receivers, as we always say, that's established right now in the Ravens. There are, at this current moment, there are two spots open. So it's up for grabs for any UDFA to grab those last two spots on the team and, and make this roster. Early days, but, you know, you make plays now, training camp come, you're going to be used to making plays. Uh, James Prochet. James Prochet, he must be the ultimate practice player. I mean, he's all over the field, making grabs over defenders, making numerous plays, two-minute drill, whatever. He, <laughs> Every time he steps on this practice field, it seems like uh, we're hearing about him making catches. I don't hear about him being locked up too often. And I don't know, will it translate to the field? That's the biggest question on James Prochet. It has nothing to do with do I think he's a quality receiver? I think he can play receiver in the NFL. He just has to do it in the NFL games. Now, when he got opportunities, say versus Denver, say versus Cincinnati, he made plays. So it's confusing as to why the Ravens don't trust this guy in game, but would give him all the reps in practice. So it kind of leaves you wondering as a fan, what's the disconnect? You know what I mean? Obviously, practicing the game is two uh, completely different speeds. But if a guy keeps showing up in practice, you would think that would lead to way more playing time than James Prochet got during the game. But he keeps making plays. So, And um, as I mentioned earlier, it was a good day for the defense. So there were some frustrations, uh, particularly in the second half of the practice, apparently, uh, which I think they said that the offense had some false starts and some things like that, which actually led Lamar Jackson to punt the ball in the air at one point because he was frustrated. Um, to me, that's not a big deal. Um, Lamar Jackson just coming back, so maybe there was some some things with the snap count, whatever, um, that caused the guys to false start. All right, this is all time and stuff that you practice for. Now, I can get that it can be frustrating, but this is stuff that you work out now, so when the season comes, this isn't a uh, major issue. So get all that worked out now, and let's let, let's move forward. Okay, so let's talk about that, e that, that defense that was good today. Okay, now... Um, First of all, we're going to say uh, Geno Stone. Geno Stone was a guy uh, that I've mentioned before uh, as part of this deep, deep safety run. He was making plays today. 
the Ravens have like 85 safeties, okay? <laughs> so, and all of these guys are making plays. Only guy that's not making plays right now, I believe, is our Darius Washington. That's because he's hurt. Uh, so, it seems like every single safety that they have on this team can make a play. It's, it's really incredible. I don't think I've ever really seen a safety from this deep as far as the Ravens go. You know, we've had good starters, but just to have quality backups as well, like, it's kind of crazy what the Ravens got going on right now. Um, so also Pepe Williams. So Pepe Williams rotated some at safety too. They said, but the main thing is he's making plays in coverage and he's this around football. Like his energy, you gotta watch some of these videos on that they post on Instagram and Twitter. Like I swear, him and Marcus Peters gotta be related or something, man. Their energy is so crazy. It's so alike, and. He's a he's he's a trash talker on the field. The Ravens need a guy like that. They really do. A guy who has that attitude, that swagger about him. And that's that's not a force for Pepe Williams. That's really just who he is. So he caught an interception today, I believe, on um, Anthony Brown, a third string quarterback. Now you want to see him make these plays um versus like, you know, QB one and stuff like that. But when the opportunity comes, I don't have any doubt that he can because he's made plays guard Rashard Bateman. He's very, he's made plays guard pretty much anybody that they put in front of him. So I'm not gonna lie, when they drafted him, I thought this okay, special teams guy, da da da. He's not gonna play that much, but he keep doing like this. He gonna jump over top of Jalen Armour Davis, and you know it's only cornerback, you know four or five. But the Ravens are so deep that they're, they're gonna rotate guys, and these rookies are probably gonna play. So it's just practice, but he keeps putting these kind of practices together. He's going to play, you know what I mean? Whether it's special teams or on the defense, he's going to play. So that was cool. And um, so, yeah, start of the show, man. Daylon Hayes. Daylon Hayes' name is popping up all over the place. Impressive again. He notched another uh, sack. Obviously not a real sack because you can't hit the quarterback. But uh, a would-be sack. And he also caught an interception. Apparently, he faked the blitz, dropped back into coverage, and caught a pick on, on Lamar Jackson. So on QB1. I mean, Dalen Hayes, man. Like, this dude, uh, I saw one of the writers, but I think it was Kyle Barber, said, we need to see him in, um, we need to see Dalen Hayes in pads ASAP. And I couldn't agree more. Like, we need we need Dalen Hayes to play well, and he's playing well right now in practice. So, I can't wait to see what he does when we get to training camp and his full pads, full go preseason games. Uh, granted, that he'll, that he'll probably play some of those as well. Uh, he's looking like a real player right now so hopefully it's not just a, a practice a practice warrior and that he can take that into real games because the ravens need him and i'm just excited about his talent this is a guy who i really believe is a is a really true breakout uh candidate for this team so um the dalen hayes secret is not gonna say secret for very long he keeps playing like this so shout out to dalen hayes to keep making plays and um one coaching thing from like in the, from like team drills that i thought was interesting they said that Mike McDonald was working on a drill where the defensive linemen uh, are working on swatting the ball at the line of scrimmage. Now, Calais Campbell is like, what, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, so he's already pretty good at this. But this is a good skill for the rest of the D-line to learn because this breaks up the pass game. This breaks up the uh, the momentum of an offense, batting the ball down at the line of scrimmage. If you can't get there on your initial rush, put your hands up as a uh, defensive lineman. So I, I, I really like this drill. I really like the fact that they're working on this because – this is something that's going to help the defense. It can't, breaking up passes, it can't all be relied on a secondary. You know, linebackers have to make plays. And the D-line has to make plays too. Like I, like I said, Dalen Hayes faking the blitz, dropping back in the pass lane, picking the pass off. Or somebody rushing, engaging the lineman. Okay, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm not getting anywhere. Let me put my hand up and make a play. So, uh... I think that kind of training is really good. It's really um, it's needed because it's a passing league. And any who can do to disrupt the passing game is much needed. So that's the practice report from day two. Uh, day three is going to happen today, and we'll see what happens from there. But, um, you know, I, I like what I'm hearing about the defense, and I like what I'm hearing from the offense too, okay? The, offense, the defense is always going to be a little bit ahead of the offense, a little bit, because, you know, offense is more about timing. Defensive guys are reading and reacting. So that's usually how it goes. The defense usually plays pretty well, especially early on during this process. So, and we believe the Ravens have a good defense, so why wouldn't we expect them to play this well? But anyway, uh, that's the practice report from uh, day two. 
Uh, well, obviously, we'll see what happens day three, see if the offense can bounce back and have a, a dominant day themselves. And uh, we'll see if the defense just keeps doing their thing. Dalen Hayes, Pepe Williams, keep, just keep doing their thing, keep elevating. But, uh, yeah, so that's the practice report. It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.